here's you on the shore, ready to measure the wave period. To do this, you'll have to focus on a spot in the ocean really, really hard. Okay? And what you're looking for as you're focusing on that spot are two waves. You're going to start the timer when the first wave crashes or passes past your point and stop the timer when the second wave comes. This time in between wave crests is the wave period. So again, you're focused, focused, focused on a spot in the ocean, ready with a timer or a stopwatch. Maybe you have someone with you with a stopwatch because it's helpful to have two people. You're training your eyes on a point on the ocean and starting the timer when you see one wave and stopping the timer when you see the next wave. That time between those waves is the wave period. Make sense? The next thing you'll measure is the wave speed. Instead of looking at one point for the wave speed, you'll look at two points. You could also use the shore as one of your points. So maybe there's a buoy of some sort in the ocean. You are watching this buoy for a wave to come and pass past this buoy. When it passes the buoy, you'll start your timer and you'll stop the timer when it reaches your second point. Maybe your second point is the shore. So start the timer when you're, you're watching one wave. You start it when it passes your first point and stop it when it reaches your second point. The next thing you'll do, so from that you'll have a time. Maybe it takes 15 seconds. The next thing you'll do is estimate the distance that the wave traveled. Maybe that was 10 feet. Right? So your wave speed would be 10 feet per 15 seconds. 15 seconds. The third, that's fine. <laughs> the third thing to measure is the wave height or the wave amplitude. To do that, you'll watch a wave, watch a few waves, and make an estimate of how tall the wave is. Maybe it's one foot or a foot and a half. Maybe you're in a place with really big waves and it's three feet or four feet. That is how you measure the wave height, by looking at a ruler or looking at something with a measurement and making an estimation. The last thing you're going to observe about the waves in your location is the drift. To do this, you will need an apple. So, on the beach or on the shore, stand at the water line and put something there or uh, drop something in the sand to mark your spot. It's very important that you have that spot solidified. So, from your spot on the shore, you're going to throw your apple into the waves. Boing. Next, you're going to, with keeping this spot, because this is very important, you're going to watch how the waves carry the apple into shore. You'll notice that maybe the apple comes straight back to where you found it, or maybe the apple comes like this, or maybe the apple comes even further. Maybe the apple goes this way. You're going to Watch the apple and see how the waves transport it back to the shore. You can also keep a stopwatch of the time it takes for the apple to come back to shore if you'd like.
But really, this is just an activity, or this is an observation. So you're going to take notes and describe how it came back to the shore. But you need to make sure that you keep this location and this spot um, marked. marked so that you can describe it based on something from where you drew it. Watching the apple as it comes back to the shore, being carried by the waves, will give you an idea of how other things could be carried by the